Man, am I excited about the new iPad OS 16. In this video, although I'm a late bloomer, in this video, I want to show you guys like the newest features of the iPad OS, the 16, which I just recently, like yesterday recently, got to update on my iPad. Also my girlfriend's iPad, which is from 2018, a 12.9 inch. But that's a different story. I'm gonna get into that as well. The reason why I wanna do this tutorial is basically to show anyone the new capabilities of two features out of, let me see, two, four, seven new ones, big ones that came out with the new OS, iOS. And with this special occasion, I wanted to add something more to my videos, which is this funny looking emoji virtual mask applied. Maybe because a lot of times I'm not used, used to or comfortable to speak to the camera. But this way, who knows, I might feel m more in my own skin, that being a panda or maybe a skull, ah, who knows. So the new iPad OS, I'm using a device like the 12.9 inches iPad Pro from 2021 with the M1 processor, also 16 gigabytes of RAM. What I've noticed upon the up update, I was using the update iOS 15.7 and I had two options. First, first one was to update to the 15.7.1 or to go straight to the 16 one. For some reason, when I tried to do the 16 one without doing the 15.7.1, I had some issues like preparing update failed prompt and I can't really explain why but I think it had to do with something with the first update that was available for me to do. I did that first. I updated, updated to the 15.7.1, 15.7.1. And after, after doing that, I had smooth sailing with updating to the 16. So in case you are in the same situation using an older version and you want to jump straight into the 16, you might encounter encounter issues or that's not a must because I did the same update on my girlfriend's iPad which is a 12.9 inch iPad Pro from 2018 that was using a, I don't know 15.6 I think 6 point something and it went straight on like the 6 iOS 16 just went smooth sailing. All that being said, uh, I would like to showcase first like the features itself using the app called Tips. It you can find it on, on your iPad on most iPads. It's not a must, but if you don't have it, just search on the App Store because it's made by Apple and it can show you a lot of new things that came with the update or even things that you could discover about your device by just reading a few tips and tricks using this app. So first one would be sharing a photo library. With iCloud, you can seamlessly share photos and videos with family so everyone can, can see the latest. To set it up, go to settings, tap photos, then tap shared library. I think this is a feature that got improved in this update because it's not a new thing. I've been using it with my girlfriend as well for I don't know how long, but it's a really good way to keep track of your photos, share them with your loved ones and so on. Now, the reply later. I haven't tried it so far, but it could come in handy when you're in a rush and you don't have time to to reply a message. You would still like to to know 
like to have a small reminder that you forgot or postponed the reply for that message. It, it's just like mark a text message as unread to come back to it later. Swipe right on the message, then tap the chat bubble icon. All right. You can also edit text messages. This is the third feature that's got in the new release. Send a message too fast, touch and hold the message. Then choose edit to unsend it all together. Choose undo send. And that allows you to make adjustments if you had to correct something or you, you know those times when you just type, type, type and send? It's, it's, it's a common issue. I think the fourth feature, the next feature that I'm, talk, I'm gonna talk about is one of my favorites because now you can actually remove the background of a photo by just holding on the subject of the photo and you can drag and drop it in messages in apps such as Procreate, which, by the way, this is a really good and really well time saver for every artist out there. And I'm gonna showcase an example of what I'm talking about. First, let's pass through all seven, and then we're gonna switch to Procreate. So, removing the background of a photo. Touch and hold the subject of a photo to lift it from the background while you keep holding the subject, switch to the other app, then drop it into a message, post and more. Keep in mind, I know a lot of you are really familiar with the new iPad OS. I'm sure you, you got your hands on maybe sooner than I did. Uh, I only noticed it available yesterday. I don't know when it became available in Romania, but I'm really happy about it because with the function of removing background of a photo, you would actually end up not doing a lot of selections, manually selecting a lot, a lot of images, characters, drawings, tattoos, basically any 2D image that has a subject, you can extract it way faster and use it in your compositions later on. The next one is unsending an email. I can't really say a lot about this function because like I said, I didn't try them all. So I'm just gonna go to the next one, which is a, is a new feature that's like a major new feature. And that is multi multitasking with stage manager. So with stage manager, you can see multiple app windows at once and switch between them seamlessly. Open control center, then tap the icon, tap on app in the sidebar to open it. So basically the control center is up top where the Wi-Fi signal is, the battery percentage, and you can find it, it's this icon. I'm gonna showcase this a little bit later. And the last one is C rich weather details. Now, I was never a fan of weather details from a device in general, not my phone, not my tablet, but I've checked it out and it gives like a, a lot of information about the weather. You can definitely check it out, see for yourself if you find anything useful there. But in my opinion, I can't really have personal opinion right now because like a few of the features that got with got here with the new update, I didn't quite use. But the, the the ones that I really really like are multitasking with ease and removing the background. So I'm gonna start with removing the background. Okay. So I prepared for you guys to see an album of a few photos that are gonna serve really well for our example. This is me and my lovely daughter. I know, she's a cutie. This is one of my previous works. And as you can see, it has background. It has like just a simple background, but still, I'm gonna try a few examples and just see how the function of removing the background quickly applies 
to some of my work. For example, this mural wall that I did, which is spray painted. I'm gonna try and see for each and every one of them. Also, removing the background to a tattoo done that you need to just erase the background and maybe replace the background with something more pretty and not just a blank textured tissue. Also, a photo of me. Forgot to mention my lovely girlfriend. I really love this photo of us. And yeah, a few 3D work, a few photos that you can normally find online, renders from nomads, and yeah, just recent work, basically. So I got these photos. And what I would like to show you is how fast you can work now by just adding, for example, you, you want to do a tattoo design, right? And every tattoo design, if it's a custom one, you're going to do some research, at least a bit of research. You're going to save some photos. You're going to use them as reference. You're going to want to remove the background and maybe... You don't want to spend time on selecting now, my friends. It's I really love this function. Basically, all you have to do is tap on your subject, drag and drop into the Procreate app. And as you can already see, it does a really good job on just extracting the subject. You, you will see though some areas that you will need to personally come and extract them yourself like over here but this is nothing compared to the feature itself with with how useful the feature it's itself is i'm gonna take the next photo because what i want to do now is continue my work and just add another one so i can adjust it put it in place and continue from here I've noticed that depending on the background, if it's a similar tone to your subject, it will have a few places like this that are not as sharp, sharply selected and extracted from the background. It's all about what kind of outline the subject has from the background. As you can see, the better the photo, the better the quality of the extracted layer. And this one, I'm really curious. I'm curious if, we, if it's able to extract the character from a mural art done with spray cans. And one sec, I'm gonna tap on the first football soccer player. My bad. Once again. All right, something is not quite there. Hmm. Apparently, it has some difficulties into doing exactly that. All right, we're going to try the next photo. Okay, this has no problems. So you see, the better the photo and the cleaner the background, you will be able to extract it really fast, use it in your composition however you like, and just continue from there without having to do manually or maybe not completely having to do this manually but only having to extract the parts that are had actually difficulties in the selection let's see this one all right this went quite fast yeah, you see over here at the logo from the studio because of the gradients because of the similar tones it had trouble selecting the subject because the subject was the person itself wearing the tattoo, not the logo. Let's see if I can select the logo though from this image. I think I need to zoom out. Now it's, I can select it as a text and paste it as well as a text, but that, that's not what I was looking for. Anyway, moving on to the next image. As you can see, it does a really good job into helping you bring, without any background, the photos that you need. Imagine, for example, if you're, if you're I don't know, um, taking photos of products and want to sell them online and you, and you need to do like good quality work fast. You just make a setup 
that's really has a good light and clean background the subject itself is going to be in the center of attention you take a good photo of it you take 100 photos of whatever products you you, you want to edit further on and you use this feature like this and you just continue your edits way faster than you would normally do to just do steps over and over with even automatic automatic selection like this because yeah it's if it's a clean background and you do automatic selection basically it does the same thing but not as smooth not as fast and you have to keep doing steps if you have 100 photos imagine you would have to do this action 100 times so i don't know for me as a tattoo artist it's one of the coolest things i've seen so far on a mobile device it applies also to your iphones if you have like one of the latest iphones and you have available the ios 16 you're going to be able to bring your models to, to bring your subjects without any background into conversations such as messenger facebook i think in comments and yeah you can just go nuts with it it's like that cool you know i see i have some troubles when i am doing more than just a few photos but i think it depends on the model itself also maybe it's quite at early stages of developing the update itself any tattoo artist out there struggles i think they, they struggle with all of the references they use or just want want them in in their canvas in their digital canvas just to be able to edit manipulate photos uh, draw on top of them use them as references for just like study practices and creating tattoo designs on the fly so this will definitely improve your work trust me i'm really stoked about it all right and now that i've show, showcased this feature i can show you as well the stage manager how you can turn it on and how you can use it so basically you would pull the control center from the upper right corner you activate stage manager and now you can open your apps you've noticed that i had them in split screen and now i have them like way smaller but still in split screen all together and in the left side i have the tips app that i can switch easily between or i can bring it as a third app altogether in the same time i can adjust the position of them the size of them and to just play with how i arrange them as i'm working on because here i have my photos over here i have my procreate basically i can drag my procreate all the way here i can use this one actually not even this one i can bring a new one I can bring Safari and I can make it a little bit smaller because this way maybe I'm searching for references online and I'm gonna bring these ones as well so now let's throw this in the sidebar let's move this over here and this one over here so basically I'm gonna bring Safari let's arrange them differently I'm using a mouse that's why you're seeing my cursor I wanted to use the mouse so that way you, you you can you can see where I'm pointing at when I'm talking. Oh, also I wanted to share with you guys that now you can find me on, on Patreon as well. It's just like patreon.com slash color the ninja and if you wanna get access to my content, my resources, and a few of the files that I'm putting them up for grabs for anyone that's interested in stuff that's similar to 
what I'm trying to explain. Feel free to check my socials because in the Linktree app you will find it's quite easy. Also, I'm going to leave it in the description of this video so that way you don't have to go all the way and just look in the link tree. I really want to thank anyone that all of you basically that are doing such a fantastic job into being close and liking my videos, commenting to my videos. I really, really appreciate the feedback and with your help, I can develop and uh, customize the content that you want to see, you want to learn. We're all here to learn. Trust me, I follow a lot of good YouTubers, a lot of good vloggers, artists, and with now with Patreon, I want to support them as well. And yeah, who knows from here, the journey can be even more interesting, interesting now that I'm more than certain I want to bring this kind of content as often as possible and put all the resources that I can and that I'm making up. I just feel like really grateful for anyone that's in this place working their ass off into being better, learning better, developing their skills and knowledge with anything that makes you happy. Yeah, I think that's it for tonight. Thank you. Creep, keep yourself creative. And yeah, man, just have fun with it. <laughs> Bye.